Here we are with Nick Sampson. Uh, can you speak a little bit about how, how this whole process has been the past year, the past several months? How has it felt? How have, how have you enjoyed it compared to other work you've done? Well, Faraday Future is not even two years old. Faraday Future started in April 2014. So the last two years since then has been a wild ride. It's been better than anything else I've previously done. And that, that's saying something. I've worked at Jaguar, I've worked at Lotus, I've worked with Tesla. And well, Faraday Future is e even more exciting and even more dynamic and even more what interesting is, than What is it else. about, I mean, process, but what is it about it that's so exhilarating that, that puts it at such a level? It's, it's a number of things. It's, it's both uh, what we're doing, how we're doing it, and the people that we've got. got, got it. So we, we try to do something really uh, interesting for people and for mankind. We're trying to create vehicles that are going to make a difference to people's lives and make a difference to society. We pulled together a team that's uh, very dynamic from a diverse number of uh, in different industries. So rather than just being all automotive guys, we've got people from the consumer electronics world, we've got people from the aerospace industry we've got people from, from uh, the internet industries and uh, digital you, world can, so you give, can you give a bit of a, a general percentage on how much how much are you know software guys how much are hardware guys uh, or is that a no, too just, tough right now <laughs> it's not that I don't want to give it I just don't hard to guess yeah, yeah. but probably uh, I would say it's split about about 50 50 I mean we, we've got the only 50 percent of people who are a real gym in automotive guys, the best uh, uh, from a variety of industries. Um, and that's what, what, what makes it different. Yeah. And I mean, we're very focused on the consumer market, consumer cars, so we're very eager to see the, the production car that you, uh, <laughs> I, I hear you, you have a prototype you're testing. What, can you give us some details on, on what stage of the of the development you are, or what type of stage of the testing, any, anything about the car? Right, well, we've already uh, got a number of what we call mule vehicles, so they're, they're vehicles that are built around other, other existing vehicles but with our technology put inside it we've got a number of those already running around and, and testing we've had cars and which, in. which cities would we maybe spot spot them in no, i'm just kidding i'm just kidding keep going keep going we've, well uh, we've actually already had a car running up in northern minnesota uh, in the ice and snow because that's a very important environment to get into yeah. that's a real key thing with uh, Vehicle development, vehicle development that you there's only so many winters each. Yeah. You only get one winter each year and yeah. if you're trying to do accelerated programs and get it things out quickly, you need to capture the winters. So we, we have to get vehicles out to you know, we've been doing that this year and we'll be building uh, our first phase of proper, proper, proper prototypes uh, later during this this year. Later this year. Yeah. And so can you speak a little bit about the timeline, the timeline for hitting the market? I know you don't want to give firm dates, but general dates of, of when you expect to get to the next stage and then the production stage and then... Well, we'll be, we'll be building prototypes during the rest of this year and uh, as we've said before, we'll be uh, launching the vehicle and having it in production within two years. Within two years, yeah. Real confident, yeah. And you, can you speak about classes at all? What types of, what, what number of, of passengers with class vehicles or not yet? Not not, not yet. I mean, we've already said that we're, we're starting off at the premium end of the market and uh, then, then, then working down to the higher volume, so doing it uh, faster than, uh, which is our fashion to do things fast and efficiently, we're going to do it faster than uh, other, other people have done. Anyone in history, yeah? Yeah. And um, so, uh, so I heard you say that it would be fully autonomous capable, right? Not not at launch, but that is that is our aim. Okay. We're, we're, we're aiming at uh, highest levels of autonomy uh, as we go go through. There's a there's a, it's a, a big roadmap of, to get cars to the stage of being fully autonomous, and that's not just technology. That's more actually legislative yeah. reasons that uh, there's a lot of changes going to happen before people will allow fully autonomous vehicles out openly on the public road. So there's a number of hurdles to get over and a, a roadmap to get there that uh, not only us but other 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 people will be pushing as well. And we're definitely very curious with the, the deep connection to late, late TV and uh, the potential for collaboration with autonomous driving with entertainment. Can you say anything about that, about uh, ideas, thoughts for how entertainment would be built in and late TV would be uh, 
connected with the, with the with the future cars? Well, they're a key technical partner we're working with. Uh, our vision is that uh, today our lifestyles are very connected. We're, we're at home. We're connected to our TVs and our pads and our computers. And then as soon as we get out, we're, we're connected by our phones. And in most cases, as soon as you get in a car, that level of connectivity disappears, other than by getting your phone out. So what we believe is that people's lives need to be more seamlessly connected. Not only is it uh, just the vehicle is connected, but it's the same connection. So it doesn't matter if you've been watching a movie in your home, you can still carry on watching it in your car, or playing a game, or planning a route. You can do it, it doesn't matter what environment you're in, you can carry on doing it seamlessly across all those uh, areas. Keep going. I will take anything you give us. Yeah, keep going. So those 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 areas of connectivity, uh, uh, with people like Eli TV or Eli Eco, as they now now know, and uh, the, the link then into autonomous driving for the future is that as as we move to higher levels of autonomy, particularly whilst we're moving through those stages, I mean at the eventual stage. If the car is fully autonomous, then obviously no. people will want to be connected and doing things in that time. But more importantly is the interim stages where perhaps you might be doing parts of journeys autonomously or semi-autonomously. For us, the big safety feature is that as soon as the person needs to be back in control, in command of that vehicle, if you're connected through the vehicle, the vehicle can force you to take back over control. If you're fiddling and playing with your phone and the, the autonomous system starts to need need help, then right. that's not safe, that's not good for, 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 the, for the road safety and that's not good for society. So by making the vehicle connected, then you can hand back, make a seamless change between autonomous sections and non-autonomous sections. Well, thank you very much. We, we, we love having another exciting story to cover on the Clean Technica and EVF session and look forward to drive, test driving the first uh, production, production options.